Hi there, everyone. Welcome. We have Trish James from Seniors Helping Seniors joining us today. And I thought it would be a great opportunity for us to get to know uh, Trish, but also what Seniors Helping Seniors can do for our community here in the villages and surrounding areas. So many families come to me and say, I just need a little help. And they don't even know what Seniors Helping Seniors is all about. And it's such a great resource for families. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for us to learn more. Um, and Trish can share with us maybe some stories about some families that she's helped out, allowing them to stay home longer and be supported through whatever journey they're on and also how she works with adult children from out of state, just to make sure that parents are safe, especially here during the coronavirus and people feeling isolated, how she's been able to kind of navigate that with families and making sure that people are kept safe. So Trish, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm so glad we get a chance to learn more about you and Seniors Helping Seniors. So tell me a little bit about what you do. I'd be happy to, Lisa, but first of all, thank you for this opportunity to speak with you. It's always a pleasure, and since we can't be together in the same room to share our ideas and concepts, this is a fabulous idea. I appreciate it. Uh, well, Seniors Helping Seniors is a home care company, and it's our goal to match active seniors who have you know, the heart, uh, a caring, caring heart, a friendly disposition, and a sincere desire to help another senior who might need a little or a lot of help so that they can stay at home safely and live their independent lifestyle that they, they so much earned through their careers. Uh, one interesting example of this actually is my own mother. Uh, at 95, she needed a little bit of help. She stopped driving. So my sister and I fortunately lived close by and we could help her get to her appointments. We could get her to church, to her bell choir practice, anything that she needed, we were there for her. But at the end of every day, she'd always say, daughter, what do people do that don't have daughters? Mm -hmm. And that kind of resonated in my mind. And that's what kind of set my journey off that when it was time for me to retire, I needed to find something else with a purpose. And I ran across Seniors Helping Seniors. Since I'd had a 42 year uh, career in healthcare as a lab professional, having um, known the industry from hospitals to doctors to nurses, uh, nursing facilities and the like, uh, I felt I had the business background. I spoke to my husband and he said, you know what? I've been helping our neighbors. I can do that. So let's give it a go. And that's how our journey started. And we have so many seniors here in the villages that uh, we are helping in a very light manner. Oh, what a great story. So how has this pandemic changed how you've been doing business and caring for families? Uh, it's been really unprecedented and we're all kind of navigating this new normal. So how has it changed what you do? Oh, absolutely, it has made some changes. First of all, we're fortunate enough that we were deemed as an essential service. So we did not have to you know, shut our businesses down as an industry. Uh, but depending on the geography, the density of population, the density of the senior population in particular, it did change how we had to, to maneuver. Um, it has had an impact in that there are some clients who did not feel it was safe to have us come in their home any longer and they put a, a pause or suspended their business. Those are particularly the ones where we might go in and help uh, take a loved one out for an activity so their other loved one can have some respite time. Mm -hmm. uh, those were the services as far as my experience that uh, were seriously more impacted. Mm -hmm. um, the number of calls coming in certainly is way down. Uh, there, there's not uh, a great deal of new business coming through. I've had days when my phone doesn't ring at all. And that's like, ooh, I'm starting all over again. But I've also been very fortunate in that although the people who work for me are senior citizens themselves, the majority of them have been working with the same client for a long time. So they felt very safe with one another. So we were able to kind of continue on. I feel bad for the uh, agencies, frankly, that are working with some of the assisted living facilities because they're on lockdown and that business is gone for them. I've only had that happen to two of my clients, fortunately. Wow, okay. So what kind of services does Seniors Helping Seniors provide? Well, our services are really quite diverse. Um, they're based, all of them are based on companionship. 
Uh, we like to say it should feel like getting a little help from a friend. So we help around the house with light housekeeping, such as laundry or changing the beds, um, cooking, shopping, mailing letters or bills. Uh, we can even assist with pets if they need to be walked and it's not safe for someone to take their pet on a little walk. Uh, if someone needs to get help getting out and about, uh, we provide the escort services for all types of appointments or errands. And we can even um, uh, make calls to family members who don't live nearby and, and want to know, okay, you've had your eyes on my mom or my dad. How are they really doing? Mm -hmm. Through the telephone, they can be pretty <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we find that a lot. Are you doing a lot of Zoom conferences and tele uh, doing FaceTime with families? We have not, actually. And um, I just recently did sign up for a Zoom account. So I was kind of going to entertain that, and particularly now in light of Florida's numbers going in the direction, unfortunately, that they are, uh, that may be something I, I should, you know, really enact. What I have been working with my marketing rep, Elaine Eisenhower, on is trying to get some uh, inspirational messages out to uh, at least our existing clients and their families. Not a big newsletter, just a little snippet of something once a week to uh, kind of keep them motivated to, to be okay. Yeah, that's great. Great thinking about that. So tell me, who provides these services for um, seniors? Who are these people? Okay. My employee, the people who work for me are employees, uh, but they're also senior citizens. They um, all are over the age of 55, and a majority of them are uh, well into their, their senior years. But they're folks who bring... Um, a lot of life skills to the table. Uh, my level of license being homemaker companion, I'm not required to hire home health aides or certified nursing assistants. So, and the types of services we probably don't require that level of service. So I'm able to, through um, good interviews, get to know the people that I hire. And it's my goal to not only provide someone that can perform a task or a responsibility, but also someone that you would feel comfortable coming into your home and really look forward to their visit. And that can make all the difference in, in the world to some people. That's really great. So how have you ensured that your staff and uh, the people that you care for um, are safe from the coronavirus? What kind of precautionary things are you doing? Certainly. Well, first of all, we've always followed good hygiene. That's, that's a, a basis of the type of service that we provide in home care. So that continues, such as immediately upon entering the home, after we do the greeting, hello, Mrs. Smith, how are you today? We go over to the sink and we wash our hands thoroughly before we start any activities. Uh, we wear, in today's world, following CDC guidelines, we're wearing masks when we cannot be uh, you know, six feet or more apart. Um, we don't necessarily require the client to wear a mask uh, within the home, but when we take them out, uh, we do ensure that they are uh, wearing a mask as well. Um, not only disinfecting the high points in the home, we also use the hand sanitizer uh, when we're out and about, because hand washing is not always possible in those situations. If an employee um, feels even just a little bit sick, they're required to call the office and they don't work. And if their illness is symptomatic, uh, certainly we ask that they, they not work for at least 10 days and report into their doctor. If somebody has um, traveled, then we do require that they quarantine themselves for 14 days. And in particular, if someone in the caregiver's home, although most of my caregivers being seniors, they don't have little kids, a lot of family, uh, many of them are single uh, or just with a spouse, but if for some reason someone in their home tests positive, then they are required definitely to not return to work for 14 days. One of the, the neat things I think that is helpful in keeping our clients safe is at Seniors Helping Seniors, we have the same caregiver taking care of the same person. So there's already that relationship on a one-to-one. -one. So we don't have a revolving door of, of caregivers coming into the home. So that helps to minimize things and make it a little more safe. 
That's great. So tell me, um, if you realized that they needed more supportive services in their home, what kind of outreach do you do to families or to them to bring in more support so that you can stay in place, but maybe temporarily they need something? Right. Um, I have relationships with a few other agencies here in the Villages area that um, I've gotten to know in their services, have perhaps had good references uh, about their services and meet with them on some basis to understand what their staffing capabilities are and such. And if it's a service that goes beyond what my license is allowing me to do, then I will tap into those and recommend that to uh, either the client themselves or the family if they made those arrangements. Often I make that part of my initial assessment mm -hmm. in that uh, let's, let's think not only about what you need today, but your life is going to change as we go on and here are some recommendations that we might need to go into. Um, I've even had some folks I've met with in the past that um, I thought they were going to go very quickly into the next level of care. So I said, you know, it might be easier. Let's bring in this other company first and let you evaluate your situation. So you find what is not only the best combination for you, but the best for your um, immediate future. And then of course, we also have your services, Lisa, that have been of value to several of my clients who um, are trying to make that, where's my next living situation? What should it be? Yeah, thank you. Yes, thanks for the partnership. It's been amazing. Yeah, I do find sometimes when I go to meet with families is sometimes I remind them that we can get physical therapy, occupational therapy in the home, right? Even if they haven't had a hospital stay or rehab stay, sometimes they've just become deconditioned. And especially in this coronavirus environment where people aren't really going out, they're not going to restaurants, they're not really using big muscles to walk around. Um, people do get deconditioned and, you know, you can just tap into that and get in-home supportive services. So, yeah, I'm always looking, you know, down the road, what, what might we need? Do we need hospice? Do we need, you know, start activating maybe VA benefits in the home, right, to offset some of the costs? So there's always that big picture, small picture, trying to figure out all the resources that people might need. Um, so have there been regulatory changes, especially in this coronavirus environment? We know about the uh, hand washing and hygiene issues, but since you started the company, have you noticed that there's been big changes for your industry or has it been pretty much the same? You know, there, I have given a lot of thought um, to that uh, regulatory side of things. And as far as my level agency and probably even the next level up, there really have not been any significant regulatory uh, changes. Mm -hmm. uh, during the pandemic, however, CMS um, has issued various waivers for, um, for companies that do a lot of the medical end of things or provide home health aids. They've relaxed some of those requirements for those companies to make it a little uh, easier for them to maintain their business. Uh, but beyond that, it's really only like the Paycheck Protection Program that has come out uh, mm -hmm. through the CARES Act that uh, some agencies, many agencies, are taking advantage of. Um, mm -hmm. I have been fortunate enough that I have not really needed to do that. Um, I have very, very loyal and very healthy employees and uh, for the most part, very loyal and healthy clients. That's great. Are you requiring your uh, employees to have a COVID test randomly as they are in um, assisted livings or, um, you know, some of the staffing there? They're now having all testing and then same with um, all the residents in assisted living, memory care, independent living, just to be sure everybody's clean and they're just doing random tests. Are you doing that or taking temperatures of monitoring temperatures at home of staff before they even come in? Or is it just sort of an honor system? It really is much, much an honor system at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, several of my employees are retired nurses. Okay. Uh, so they have provided some guidance to the rest of our um, employees during a, a recent staff meeting that we did before things got uh, on the path we are. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, they, they're really very good. I've, I've had even before this, they'll always call in and say, you know, I'm just not feeling very good and I don't want to expose Mrs. Smith to anything that I might have. And uh, we make adjustments so that, that that doesn't happen. There is some talk, um, and at the moment it's just talk, 
that they may be requiring home care companies to do testing similar to what they are requiring at the assisted living at this point. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, if they did require that, that could be a serious impact to the budget um, unless we can find enough free testing or low cost testing. Uh, but at this point, I really don't feel the need because I have every confidence that my employees are doing everything they can. And since they are seniors themselves, they're taking the precaution for their own selves, knowing they are a vulnerable population. Right. So even when they're out um, in their social life, in their private life, they are wearing masks and staying socially distanced and not having group parties or going to weddings or things like that. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a hard thing, right? I mean, it's a really an honor system and we're all trying to hunker down, but you know, you're lucky to have retired nurses because they really know the gravity of how serious this is, right? And it's, it's hard to believe it's around us because it's invisible, right? Absolutely. But until you have someone that it affects, you just don't realize that it's out there and it's just something that the people talk about, but it truly is there. Absolutely, so, and being, being the lab rat that I am, uh, having been around all those kinds of patho pathogens through uh, most of my career, uh, yeah, I, I take this very, very seriously. And unfortunately, I have had um, someone I used to work with uh, who succumbed to the virus and did pass oh, away. I'm so sorry. Wow. My two sister-in-laws actually had the coronavirus in Australia. Oh my so, gosh. I mean, crazy, right? I mean, so it's all over the world and it's everywhere and yeah, it's, it's crazy. So what do you think is going to happen? I mean, here we are. Uh, we're not even really finished with the first wave, right? And we possibly could be going into a second wave. How are you and your team sort of gearing up for the possibility of where we're going further with this, right? Because people are going to be socially isolated. That is really going to be, if we go into this, let's say in the fall, you know, schools are talking about just going until uh, maybe November, right? And at Thanksgiving, all schools go home, everybody stops because they're worried about the flu, right? Affecting uh, the outbreaks in the hospital and how we're going to manage this. So how are you sort of psyching up for this? Because there's really going to be, I think, this pent up demand for your services, right? Because people are really, they can't travel north, the adult children are going to be coming south, especially if Florida becomes a hot spot. So you're really at a point where you're almost projecting into the future. What are my care needs? Because the phone's going to be ringing off the hook. There's no doubt about it. When children can't come down here and parents have had enough and they're frail, right? The doctor identifies them as really needing some more support in the house. They're not ready to make that move. Nobody wants to move to an assisted living now or memory care now, right? Because you're locked in. You want to be in your house as long as you can. And you're gonna, your phone's going to be ringing. So how are you sort of reaching out to those possible care caregivers and 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 you know trying to um, let people know about what you do because it's so important well that is such a significant question I wish I had a, <laughs> a profound answer to it it's actually one that has, has re really just risen to the top and one of the reasons I got the zoom account so that I can tap in uh, to my employees in more of a conference kind of fashion Mm -hmm. and get them to, to give me some input on what, how they're feeling about where we're going. Um, I do think there's some pent up demand that's going to start to come out. Um, I think the other thing is to uh, really rally all of the agencies in the area and try to come up with, okay, what are our staffing capabilities and at what levels do we have that? And how can we share with one another when we get those calls that we can't respond to? Mm -hmm. I know there are seniors helping seniors um, uh, locations in other parts of the country that have gone through this and they have basically not had any business and not been able to put their staff out or they've had staff that were uh, afraid to go to work. Right. And uh, they, they really were not totally prepared for it, but they're starting to come out of it. And we're just starting to go into it. So as, as the community of seniors helping seniors, we're kind of leaning on one another to get some ideas and, and hopefully a plan that will, will carry us through this next potential wave. 
Right, right. It really is sharing best practices. Um, you know, how, how are we going to deal with this? I know each of the independent assisted memory care community have different protocols for different um, events. How do movers move in? How people move in and out? How family can sort of socially distance a visit? How are they doing conference calls and perhaps, you know, patio porch visits and dining room visits with six feet apart. Everybody um, has these different practices and it, it would be great if we all could kind of share and say, you know, this is, this is how we're making it okay for our residents on the inside and family on the outside and family from a great distance. And then again, the same thing, um, how do we help someone who needs help unpacking with someone like you, right? I have someone who just moved into a community this morning, no family, um, and we need someone to go into the building to sort out her apartment, but unfortunately they're on lockdown. So it's limited amount of people to go into the apartment, but certainly again, people who need to pack up, maybe they're getting ready to go north to their adult children. They need your services or thinking about selling a house. We're seeing a lot of people moving north now because they wanna be near their children. They, they've had enough of the villages. I mean, it's just crazy, right? Because we don't know how long this is going to our last and it's scaring the adults and the um children right so yeah, it's interesting because i just just brought on a a uh, a new client whose son is in colorado uh, he was here visiting and although mom's doing pretty good on her own he he's concerned and wanted to have someone come in at least a couple days a week for a little bit just to check on her be sure everything's okay be there when the dishwasher that's being delivered is entered so she's not there alone uh, but he's in that situation where he is looking for uh, a place to take his mom to colorado mm -hmm. so he wants us in place until he can make that happen so yeah those those are some decisions families are, are really going to be up against the wall on yeah. Yeah. So in all of this, right, what have the positives been for you guys coming out of this? What have you sort of learned um, business wise, um, but also, you know, what has this taught you about humankind and kindness and what have you learned through all of this? Oh, yeah. I, I think everybody is learning how important relationships are with family, friends and neighbors. Um, and those that don't have relationships in place, well, they might be faring a little better because they're uh, introverted and used to being alone, but I don't think that's the majority. Um, I have been very impressed with those businesses that have risen to do what they can to keep their employees hired, uh, changing their business to help support what some of the other needs are now for medical professionals. The restaurants that have changed some of their protocols to be sure that we can still get uh, restaurant quality food in a safe manner. Um, and those, oh gosh, the, the folks that uh, are doing the food relief for folks who can't even put food on their table these days. Mm -hmm. Those things are, I think, the positives that rise up uh, from, from our communities. And the way medicine itself is changing. Um, I'm very much have been a supporter of telemedicine, and I think this is going to help to push it over the edge where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of years I worked, um, my clients were insurance companies, healthcare insurance companies. So I saw the onset of telemedicine and even the onset of telelab business. Uh, it was uh, very interesting. I thought, wow, this is going to really help our future. Uh, and without the technology these days that we have, we would be so far worse off. Uh, at least we can Zoom, we can FaceTime, and we can talk to our doctors. Um, so those, those things are all, all the positives. Um, and I have also been quite, I don't know what the right word is, but I've seen my employees rise to the occasion. And I just, I just cherish that. Yeah, you must be so proud. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's terrific. So tell me, how can someone get started if one wants to work for you, right? And, or if someone maybe identifies that they have a family member that might need some help, or they themselves feel concerned, or they know a neighbor that might um, need some help, tell us how they can reach out to you and what that process is once they make that call to you. So give us a little bit of guidance. Okay, certainly. Well, it's really pretty simple, Lisa. 
Uh, as you can see on the screen, just call me in the office. Uh, I answer the phones personally. I do all the intakes myself um, at 352-288-0444. Or they can internet um, or send me an email through the internet. Uh, they can take a look at the website for Seniors Helping Seniors and get an idea of what the services are. That's usually where a family member starts to engage with me. And once we have that phone conversation in play, it really is a matter of me understanding what their situation is, trying to get a really good straw man picture of, of what would support them, how little or how much, whether my services are right, whether I need to bring some other people into the equation. So the conversations usually take a good 20 minutes for the first call. Uh, often people like to think about it for, for a day, so we'll call back and have a second conversation. But uh, as soon as they are ready, we'll, we'll start the assessment right over the phone and uh, get the majority of the information that we need to be able to put a service plan together. Um, then I would make the personal visit with them in a safe manner. Um, some folks we have uh, met on their back porch, their lanai out, out in the front yard so that we have the fresh air around us and, and feel a little more confident that we're not um, uh, being too close. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a pretty, pretty simple process. And, and if someone is interested in working for you, what kind of skills should they have? What kind of interest should they have? What, what kind of person are you looking for when you're um, looking for a new employee? Well, the one thing I always tell people when I'm hiring is I'm looking for folks that have the heart of a volunteer, but don't mind getting paid a little to do the service. I'm not looking for folks that are 40 hours a week. Uh, most people that need our help are uh, on a much smaller demand basis. I do have some clients that were there every day for many, many hours, um, but the majority of folks really just need a little bit of help. And uh, so I look for folks who are willing to do a two hour service in a neighborhood. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I've learned a lot and I hope our audience has too. And I really appreciate everything that you're doing to keep our community safe. So thank you so much for joining us, Trish. And I look forward to working with you in the future and um, the partnership. So thank you so much. Well, you're very most welcome. And I, I appreciate your taking the time with me as well. It's good to see you. <laughs> yeah, you too. Be well and be safe, okay? So um, I just wanted to introduce myself again. Um, my name is Lisa Honka and I have a company called Your Key to Senior Living Options. I help seniors find independent assisted or memory care communities free of charge. And I work with about 60 different communities finding out what medically, financially makes sense for them. And then we partner with the community to make sure that they have a smooth transition into whatever they need. So again, I'm here as a resource for the villages and surrounding areas so if anybody needs any help, here's my website. Um, they can certainly call me and I'd be happy to uh, talk to them over the phone, meet them in person, and we can navigate together. So thanks again, Trish, for joining us. You be safe, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.